And away we go. It is the nightcap brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken right here on BearcatJournal.com. As always, visit www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Download the app for Android, iPhone, everything Galactic. Get down to Dayton, Kentucky. Tell them to pump it up. Save yourself 15% off of your order or go to the app and they will bring it right to your front door pretty much anywhere inside the 275 loop. They are open Wednesday through Sunday, lunch and dinner. They serve the best fried chicken in the city. I, I know it's number two in City B. It's number one here at BearcatJournal.com. In our hearts. And like in our taste buds. So bellies. That's probably that's probably more important. In our uh, bellies. <laughs> Let's get to rolling. Uh, we, we did have a commitment today. It was it was kind of a quiet one. This is a, a little bit my fault. Uh, Braden Smith, a slot receiver, uh, can play a little bit outside. Uh, a graduate transfer from Louisville. Committed to the University of Cincinnati. Um, they've used him as a little bit of a, uh, a gadget guy. Um, he did have... Uh, 21 catches for 215 yards and a touchdown last year. He's also uh, a guy that's played a lot of special teams, 142 career special team snaps. Um, so again, you know, they had a decommitment yesterday that we talked about. We spent a lot of time kind of rambling about recruiting in the portal and life in uh, recruiting in 2023. Uh, they, they picked up, Somebody that that had quite a bit more experience than the guy that they lost yesterday, and a guy that uh, Scott Satterfield has a little bit more uh, intimate knowledge of uh, in in terms of the commitment of Braden Smith. So, uh, but no surprise that we continue to see them focusing on wide receiver in the portal. We continue to see them trying to add speed and uh, explosiveness in that slot position to the roster. And uh, that's my bad uh, earlier today on not being on top of that one. I think when that one came out, there were two things happening at the Brindle household, Aaron. One of them is um, we had a bird that has uh, tried to move into our dryer vent. Oh no. And, and build a nest. <laughs> And there's like a little tiny spot that this bird could fit through. And uh, I saw him taking a little piece of uh, twig in there two days ago. Uh, so we had to change out the, the cover. And we just so happened at one point in time, saw him leave the nest. So we... <laughs> <"Hi -ya, hi -ya." laughs> um and then well, the, the, the 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 doggy cemetery delivered bear. Yeah. So uh, sorry for missing out on that commitment, but uh, I, I hope you guys understand. I, I the Brindle household are not normal. I'm I'm looking at his stats though, and you you mentioned him being a gadget guy. He did have uh, 14 ca career passes at Louisville over the three seasons that he played there. Played in 29 games. Um, completed nine of those 14 passes for 187 yards so one of those went deep i would think uh two passing touchdowns one pick um he also returned uh kicks he had four kick returns while he was there 81 yards those came uh in 2020 so he hasn't returned in a while um does have uh, plenty of punt returns though um, with 33 over the course of his time there, 28 coming last season. Yeah, like, like I said, I think 142 special team snaps for this guy. So yeah, uh, does have a touchdown though, uh, returning punt um, yeah. house, and uh, he's caught 59 balls at Louisville uh, for two touchdowns there. In addition to his, uh, I, I would think that's an, in addition to his passing touchdowns. Uh, and then also the returning touchdown. So he's got he's found pay dirt five times in different I think, ways. I think what you're looking at is just a depth piece in that room. Like which, you, when you lose a guy, necessary. right? When you when you lose a slot guy, you got a guy who's f listed at five ten. I'm assuming another slot guy. And yeah, I mean we we right now I don't know who's returning kicks and punts. Um, 
I know that running back would seem to be the deepest place for a returner to come from. But well, I mean, punts you would assume Brian Montgomery, just because that's like he's been his spot. Yeah, yeah. Kick returns. Who knows? Gunner. Who knows? Right. So uh, you go out and you get a guy that that can fill uh, some depth and provide some special teams and, and give you some security in those areas. Uh, I think, you know, it's not a, it's not a home run hire in the game against uh, the addition. Sorry. In the game against Cincinnati though, he was three of five passing. So I guess he came in during garbage time at quarterback uh, 40 yards. And that's actually where he threw his interception uh, was against Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, but he had three, three catches, forty-five yards against Cincinnati, and uh, looks like six rushing yards against Cincinnati. So probably a jet sweep or right. you know something, something along those lines. Yeah, so, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's an addition to a room that is, as we have talked about a hundred times, needs bodies. He wasn't and... wasn't cr- wasn't credited with a rush, but he was credited with the six yards. <laughs> That's I don't know what does that mean. Maybe did he recover I, a fumble, scoop a fumble, and take it six yards on bad, bad bad snap? If he was okay. at quarterback, was it a bad well, snap? And I'm, I'm going to be honest. I started that day at the Holy Grail. I watched as much of that slop as I could until I went to Fifth Third Arena to watch a basketball game. It was dreadful. Yeah, I hate, I, I hate, I hate watched it. Yeah, I, I didn't. I hate. I've, I, I hate drove to the, the basketball arena and watched basketball instead. I've also pushed that memory so far out. I have no idea who <laughs> I have no idea who intercepted that ball. I had I couldn't couldn't tell you. <laughs> it's probably somebody that's not on the team anymore if we had not, yes. Not gonna be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, that that's that's news on the football side of things. A lot of a lot of <laughs> A lot of talk today on the basketball side of things about uh, top five prospect in 2024, Flory Badunga. There were a couple articles that came out about Flory uh, today. I, I just wanted to go on the record with a couple things. Um, this is not to say that there were articles from Travis Branham, who works for 24-7, one of the national basketball and recruiting analysts there's an article from joe tipton on on three um i guess this is what i want to say i I think both of those guys do a good job i I don't have any issue with with either of those guys what i will say is they are both of them they covered the adidas event in texas over the weekend right um when you cover an event and you're a national guy, guess what you have to do, Aaron? You have to talk to the number one rated prospect at that event. Shocker. That's, that's part of the job. You're a national recruiting analyst. And if the best player at the event is dominating, which Flory did in Dallas, like you have to talk to him. A couple things. One, Flory's English has improved since he's gotten to America, but he's not fluent in English. And a lot of times when you are talking to international players, they are so worried about not messing up, not saying the wrong thing or saying something that's that's interpreted the wrong way that they they end up leaving stuff out or they they just they they just answer the questions that are asked um they're not elaborating on things because their concern is not the same as what the interview the the person doing the interview is looking for their concern is i don't speak this language yeah and i just don't want to make myself look bad or or say something wrong i guess that's the better way to put it they don't want to say something wrong so the interviews often aren't very good that's through no fault of the person doing the interview. That's through no fault of the person being interviewed. You're just it, both it's like parties talking to someone that doesn't speak English. Both parties have different goals in the conversation. Right. So 
Travis, it's very clear that Travis's intent was to ask about the schools that he had officially visited. He also had intel that uh, they're working on a visit to Kentucky. From my conversations today, I'm not sure if that's going to be an official or an unofficial visit. Um, the, like the one main thing I think that was incorrect in Travis's article was he said he had taken an official visit to Indiana. He has not taken an official vis visit to Indiana. He has taken an unofficial visit to Indiana. So his line of questioning was, was I'm going to ask him about the schools he officially visited. I'll ask him about Kentucky because an official visit is being set up there. Flory answering the questions as a kid is, is likely to do in that situation. Just answer what you're being asked. Didn't mention that at the end of the month, he's visiting Michigan officially. March or May 28th, 29th through like the first. At the end of that, uh, that last weekend of May, he's going to take a visit, an official visit to Michigan. Um, he also didn't mention because he wasn't asked that I think today uh, Auburn had an in-home visit with him, just like I reported to a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, Cincinnati had an in-home visit with him. That wasn't mentioned. It wasn't mentioned that he's visited Cincinnati twice, that Cincinnati visited him uh, all of their allotted times in that, that previous window. Uh, the school he's visited the most is Purdue. Purdue wasn't mentioned because he hasn't taken an official visit to Purdue. And the point of what Travis was asking were official visits. So I don't necessarily like put the onus on this on Travis other than I don't think he is dialed into Flory's recruitment. And that you can't, as a national guy, you can't be dialed into anyone in particular, no, right? You, like you can't be dialed into every four and five star prospect. Like that's impossible. Sure. To know everything about every four and five star prospect. It, it's very difficult. So you, you have your bullet points. Okay. I know we officially visited Auburn already. I know we officially visited Florida already. I, like uh, these are the things I'm going to ask him about because these are the the knowns in the recruitment. And then you put an article out off of what the questions you asked, and then it gets scrutinized to the millionth degree. Because fans right? are, fan is short for fanatical. Right. So <laughs> where I think this all went wrong is Travis coming on the board and essentially saying he thinks Cincinnati is not a major factor in this recruitment. With that, I would vehemently disagree. Do I think Cincinnati leads? No. Do I think it's pretty much where I have said things are all along? Yes. Cincinnati is a, a significant factor in its recruitment. There are other schools that are also significant factors. I don't think those names have changed if you followed along in what I've reported. Cincinnati, Auburn, Purdue, Kentucky gaining steam, Indiana, Michigan, Michigan State, like I, Florida a little bit. I, I, I think, I don't think Florida has ever been as high as some people on the Florida side think that they are, but that's okay. Like he did take an official visit there. I get why those people think we've got more traction. Now here's what I will also say. Flory intends to make his decision in the fall before his high school season, which is like a, an October, maybe early November window, right before the early signing day. So you're looking five, six months from now. He's going to take senior year official visits in the fall. Cincinnati, Purdue, maybe back to Auburn. Like the schools that get the fall official visits are the ones to pay attention to. The schools he's visiting on his junior officials, you can't discredit them, but if they're not one of the schools that, that get that last round to make the final sales pitch, like I, I, I take it with a grain of salt because I don't think it's all that relevant to this particular recruitment. And 
I guess the point I'm making, like, if let's say hypothetically, this was a kid that says, and there's a lot of these kids, I plan on, like, I'm going to play my AAU summer, and then as soon as I get done with AAU in July, I'm going to make a decision. Or I'm going to play my AAU spring, and then in June, before I go out for July AAU, I'm going to commit. If if that was his timeline, then you would be a lot more focused on who his junior officials are. But his timeline's the fall, which means what's he going to do? He's going to take fall visits. He's going to go to some football games. He's going to get loved up by, you know, 40, 50, 100,000, 110,000 people, depending on where he goes. And then he'll sit down with his people and decide where he wants to go. So I, I don't fault Travis for the article that he wrote. I don't fault uh, Joe Tipton for the article that he wrote. I just think we're so far from Flory really getting into decision-making mode that those articles aren't going to be great resources when it comes time for him to make a commitment. Does that make sense? Am I well, I mean, clearly? Obviously, the, the closest <laughs> the closest we've been to a recruitment of this caliber was just last season, uh, w- where we were going with a the, the top point guard in the country, yeah, and he goes to USC. But it was a very different recruitment in that a his timeline was never really revealed until the. Mm-hmm. I nailed his timeline, but the, neither here but, nor there. I mean, publicly, publicly he never publicly, about it. Right? And then, and then there was the tragedy with his best friend and all of that. But you also didn't have a language barrier with him, while you had right. him being very protected behind parents. Well, he was coy. Like, it wasn't his parents; it was him. Okay. It was Collier that what didn't like wanted to play the game. He he knew what he was doing, and he did it well. That's not to take a shot at Isaiah Collier. No, no, I mean. Everybody does it differently, and he yeah. played it the way he wanted to play it. Um, we'll see what that means for him when he gets out to USC, because if they end up with Brownie, that, that's going to be a hold. Oh, I think they'll be good together. I'm not – I wouldn't be worried about that. I just may end up being a circus out there. In any case, the Mike Bone Show. <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, Can you imagine but Mike it's... Bone, hey, buddy, and LeBron? It's... Hey, buddy. He, 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 won't, he won't be that close to him, I don't think. Uh, it's my bow, man. Come on. Yeah, uh, we'll see. We're in any case, in I don't even want to get into that. Um, <laughs> I guess, I guess, I, I don't know. It's just very, very different recruitments, and it's interesting to see when you get this close to top caliber guys, and when you're dealing with somebody who is, uh, I guess, domestic versus international. Yeah. Some of, some of the different hoops that you have to go through, and. When, when you're the dealing, barriers that exist. Yeah, yeah. And things that you don't think of uh, as you're looking at a recruitment as a whole. Um, when, when you're looking at – you don't have a translator necessarily, right? Like I don't know that Flory no. has a translator with him uh, as we see with major league ball players who are making the transition from AAA to the bigs. They, they right. always have a translator even when they can speak – they're, they no, don't, he's they, just they're, walking off the floor at, a right. game, at an AAU game, and somebody's putting a, a microphone in his face. The the MLB the MLB players are not asked to speak English until they feel comfortable. Like even when they can speak it, they're not asked to speak it until they feel comfortable doing it. And this Sammy is very Sosa very different. Speak English when it was like forty five years old, he couldn't speak English. This this is this is just very very different. Come on, um, that was funny. I was. I'm not getting into those weeds, uh, but. <laughs> um. He was white, but he still couldn't speak. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> My point is just that the, the recruitments are very different. He's, he's Sam so, now. He's Sam Sosa now. <laughs> so I to, to, to bring this full circle before we get out of here, I've talked to people in and around the recruitment. I've talked to people in and around basketball in the state of Indiana. I've talked to people in and around the country that are involved in recruiting Flory. I don't get the sense that anything is different than what I've been reporting for a while. There are, there are one or two, like depending on how 
narrow you think the gap is, there are one or two groups of schools that are heavily in play for his services. Cincinnati is firmly in that top group and by proxy in the larger group. And does that mean they're going to get him? Absolutely not. There's a long way to go. Flory's going to make his own decision. Uh, but Cincinnati de- is still dealing with firmly involved. We're dealing with guys like Juwan Howard, Coach Cal, um, right? Bruce Pearl. Like these are uh, some sh- these Bell. are some shrewd coaches that will do whatever it takes to get, to get the guy. Maybe the best player in the country. I think he's the best player in the country. In terms of guys that like what their impact will be at college, I think Flory is the most impactful future college player in the country that's playing high school basketball, at least in the the 2024 class. So, yeah, it's going to be a war. That's what happens when you recruit top three prospects. Do I agree with Travis when he says that he, he thinks Cincinnati is way behind and has a lot of work to do? No, I don't. That doesn't mean I think Travis's work is shit. It just means that he's talking to different people than me. I don't agree with his, what he's hearing. And guess what? You guys know this. If I did agree with it, I would come on here and say it. I was asked, Aaron, for what, a year? Gun to your head. What do you think happens with Isaiah Collier? What did I say? The whole time. He commits to USC. Yeah. I think he goes to USC. I never once blew smoke up anybody's ass. And we legit had the gun to your head conversation. <laughs> legit. Gun to your head. Yeah. I don't like when, like, you know, I don't want to be on the the the, the, the mantle at my house. Uh, <laughs> we're not putting any guns to my head. Um, sorry. The, the, making me laugh, making myself laugh. Is we, we all, yeah, we all, we all cope the way we have to. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a bad joke. I'm sorry if I made anybody uncomfortable. I, um, but if not, I felt not, like not the worst joke I've ever made. No, it was it was okay. If I felt like UC was out, or or they had a, a ways to go, or they had a lot of ground to make up, I would sit here right in front of you all and say, I think they are still in pretty much the same position for Flory that they've been for the past year, and we'll see how it plays out. But to say that that UC is way behind and has a lot of work to do, I personally don't agree with that. That's Travis's take. That's fine. It, it's okay in this industry to have people that have different takes. My intel is different than his. Maybe I'll be wrong. We'll see. I, I know I haven't been wrong a lot. So it's debatable. On this that's stuff. The, that's the joke. I know. On this stuff, I've been wrong on a lot of things. On this stuff, I haven't been wrong a lot. We'll see you tomorrow night. That is the nightcap. Brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken. Right here on BearcatJerk.com. See ya!